I would struggle as a five, six, seven year old kid doing what my dad did for extra money, which was stripping cars. Imagine a five, six year old kid with a screwdriver and your dad saying, hey, you, you see anything that you can hit, take off? Go take it off. So I grew up one of the poorest kids in my neighborhood, very diverse neighborhood. And my neighbors, mostly African American. And so I grew up going over to my friend's house and they would throw on old jazz records, old blues records, and I had this one neighbor who was very, very political. And he started introducing me to political music. And this is The Last Poets. How many of you have ever heard of The Last Poets? Nobody. How many of you listen to hip hop music at all? Any type of hip hop music? A little bit, some of you, all right? This group right here, they're a group of spoken word poets who were very political, and this album was considered one of the first non-hip-hop, but hip-hop precursor albums. And so I was introduced to this, and it kind of blew my mind. And when I was growing up listening to early rap music, rap music was a lot more fun, it was a lot more clean, but they also had politically and socially conscious music, and that just struck me. I, I grew up in this diverse area, I wanted to understand racism, I wanted to understand prejudice, I wanted to understand psychology, I want to understand politics and why the world is the way it was. And so I got into music. I got into poetry. It was kind of my outlet. Growing up poor and one of the poorest in a poor neighborhood, I got picked on a lot. So I was very shy, very insecure. And so writing gave me an outlet. And my friends and I, the ones I was really close with, we started writing and sharing stories. And we'd say, hey, let's write about this. Or we watch the movie, let's talk about that, let's write a, a little poem similar to this movie or this story that we wrote. All right? And so my best friend that I grew up with, his name is Steve Kozan, 